god. Oh my god. As you know, I always have props, so. <laughs> I'm ashamed. I also have the shirt. Oh my god. Look at all this fucking hair. <laughs> I'm tired and sad and life my life's been really fucking weird, hasn't it? <laughs> y'all remember when y'all had hope that life would get better? And then it didn't. <laughs> I filmed my last video in March. In March. It's September. <laughs> I've been day drinking, so I can't really make any promises with this one. But I really can't make any promises anyway. With most of my videos, I just kind of hope for the best whether that happens or not i don't know i don't have any fucking control or anything in this goddamn life anymore <laughs> i've had no energy like at all to play a video let alone research one and then sit down and actually film it i actually did film this one this like topic a couple months ago probably if i had to guess probably back in like july I didn't really like how it came out. Like it just didn't look right. We're gonna try again. <laughs> Hopefully this one will be a little bit better. Also, um, I don't know if you can see this right here on my face. Um, I used one of those blackhead thingies on my face for too long and it pretty much gave me a face hickey. It's not like I'm getting hickeys from anywhere else, so. <laughs> you make do. I shouldn't put that in. <laughs> there is coffee in this, by the way, but it's an Irish coffee. So there's alcohol in it too. That's like the best of both worlds. I think I showed this off already. Either way, we got Nessie and I got my big man Sasquatch. And that's what we're talking about today. Um, I probably put it in the title, so it's, it's not like I spoiled it or anything. We're talking about Sasquatch. I've always been into the paranormal because I was obsessed with the Travel Channel and their documentaries. So Loch Ness, ghosts, monsters, aliens, Bigfoot, they were all <laughs> these really big parts of my childhood, which is kind of weird, but I wouldn't go back and change that because it would not make me me. For Sasquatch itself, I really liked watching all the documentaries. Obviously, I like it a lot. I did a video on it before. <laughs> you should go back and watch it, even though it's bad. It's actually one of my favorite ones for myself because I can actually sit down and rewatch that one without like too much cringe, which is difficult for me because I cringe at every single part of my life. I am cringing at myself this very minute. <laughs> but for Bigfoot itself, it was the Patterson and Gimlin film that really got me into like being interested in Bigfoot. Like, it's such a big video, just the very name of it is notorious in, like, cryptid communities. It's really what convinced me that Bigfoot existed when I was little, because, I don't know, it's weird. But, like, now that I'm older, I, I'm not sure if it's real, like, the film or Bigfoot itself. I believe in Bigfoot more than I believe in ghosts, because, like, Bigfoot's more physical rather than a ghost, which is, like, energy or whatever the fuck. I used to watch this piece of film over and over and over just like I was captivated by this thing for some reason because like one it's old and I like vintagey things and like photographs and videos and stuff like that but it's like the video has never been truly replicated the way the creature moves is bizarre because it moves very fluidly and not like an animal and <sighs> Should there have been a costume? I don't know if it could have acted on a body the way it did in that video. So, I don't know. I really just wanted to sit down and research this film as much as possible and just like, discuss what the film shows and like who filmed it and just think about whether or not something like this really could exist. The Patterson and Gimlin film is really what brought Bigfoot into like pop culture and media. So, because I didn't really know like anything about it besides like the actual like the image itself. I thought, you know, really sit down, research it and see what it's all about. And then like learn about the history of Bigfoot. We'll start with the tiny bit of history of Sasquatch itself, not just the video. A lot of cultures throughout the world have some sort of Sasquatch-like creatures in their legends. History of them date back to like the 1840s. The sightings were reportedly dated back to the 1820s. This is according to a couple named Janet and Colin Boards. 
and they wrote a book that compiled like over a thousand sightings of the creature. It dates from like 1818 to the 1980s, so it covers like a whole span of a century. Unfortunately, I can't find any credentials of these people, whether or not they're like archeologists or anthropologists, if they studied like animals or the land or people or whatever. So I don't know how qualified they are <laughs> for certain fields. When I Google them, they have a lot of like author credits and stuff and they have degrees, but I don't know what makes them credible to talk about like anthropomorphic figures so i don't know so while there are sightings of sasquatch like creatures like all over the globe the most notorious and the most well-known ones are from north america uh, specifically like the pacific northwest reported sightings date back to 1818 but documented sightings go back to like 1811 when a british explorer named david thompson he is credited as having discovered the first set of sasquatch prints so he's the one who really found like the first bit of physical evidence now the actual term sasquatch was first used around like 1925 to the 1930s and it comes from the and i am going to butcher this so i will have the word on the screen <laughs> it comes from a mainland halk melum word but i'm assuming even though i don't know how to fully pronounce this word it looks like the word sasquatch so i'm assuming it sounds similar to the word sasquatch because it's like a root word so that's a little bit of history on like sasquatches themselves so now we're going to go into the two people who filmed the famous footage, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin. Patterson is the one who's often credited as the like main director of the piece, but technically both of them filmed that famous encounter. It's only like a one minute clip too. I thought it was more like closer to five or 10 minutes. Bob Gimmel and him, he lived a pretty like normal, like rustic type of life. He was a cowboy, he tamed animals, he like drove trucks and he like, he fixed things. He was like, he was just like a really rustic man. And Patterson was one of his old friends and they had met, well, I don't know exactly where they met, but they were rodeo riders together and they were also amateur boxers together. So they knew each other from the past and they reconnected connected in 1967. Now during this reconnection, that was when Patterson had told Gimlin of his like interest in like Sasquatch and Sasquatch sightings. And previously like before this, him and Gimlin would often go like riding their horses through the forest, which is how their friendship after this reconnection was starting to form again. And in August of 1967, it was when Patterson told Gimlin that the creature had been spotted in Six Rivers Forest by a certain logging crew. Now, this is why they were in the forest the day that they had their encounter, because they were looking for it. Patterson wanted to go out and see if he could actually find anything related to the creature or like actually see if he could find it. As I was researching, I was seeing like these conflicting reports that they were filming like a pseudo documentary in Six Rivers, but I can't really fact check that with other sources. So it might be a false claim. It's kind of what Wikipedia says, but you're not really supposed to trust Wikipedia. So I was like looking in other spots and I, I just couldn't find anything that corroborated this fact, but I thought I'd mention it just in case because you never know. Gimlin was the skeptic of the two of them, but he stated that once Patterson asked him to go to Six Rivers with him that day, he found himself curious and quote, he wanted to see these footprints that these people talked about. These people being the logging crew that Patterson had mentioned to him. So on October 20th of 1967, Gimlin and Patterson were on their famous ride in Six Rivers Forest and they were coming alongside Bluff Creek and their horses sensed the creature first um, because they reared away. And it was at this point that Patterson jumped off his horse and ran towards the creature with his camera in hand. Gimlin followed like very shortly after, quote, dismounting his horse and drawing his rifle because Patterson had told him to cover, cover him, meaning to draw his rifle and protect him in case this creature that they were coming up towards was like a bear instead of like a Sasquatch. So this motion of Patterson jumping off his horse and starting to run is what is seen at the top of the cliff where it's very shaky, but then Patterson like runs up towards the creek and he begins to steady himself in the camera onto the creature in front of him. And that's when you get the shot of it walking straight across.
The film is only about a minute long, but the figure is still like very clearly seen. Like you can't mistake what this film is about if you were seeing it for the first time. This creature, it's very, very human-like in a sense in that it's like walking and it's walking from left to right. Um, and it takes a moment to actually like glance back at Patterson and Gimlin seemingly I would assume probably because Patterson and Gimlin were making a lot of noise this backward glance it's actually like famously known within the community as frame 352 and Patterson states that he thought that the glance was of quote contempt and disgust so apparently Patterson felt very unsettled by this glance from the creature. Of the sighting only two people were present Gimlin and Patterson and Patterson later estimated that the creature had to be over like seven feet tall but Gimlin says it was like around six feet tall and there's an anthropologist who actually looked at the the footage. His name is Grover Krantz and um he's taken a look at the footage and analyzed it and he places his estimate closer to the six feet that Gimlin stated rather than the seven feet that Patterson stated. I can't do averages in my head so I'm probably gonna put it somewhere on screen so it's gonna be seven plus six plus six so that's seven plus twelve 19 <laughs> divided by three people it's 19 divided by three it's a decimal there's no like actual like full number 19 divided by three 6.33333. All right, so it's closer to six foot three inches or so. I think that's the correct answer. I don't know why I'm doing math. I can't do math. That's why I'm a, I'm a history and English major. Fuck off. <laughs> In a look back interview, Gimlin states that he was not afraid of the creature um, due to frequent hunts in the forest. He was like, he was used to being close to wild animals and creatures that could very easily hurt or kill him. He describes the experience more of a surprising experience rather than a scary one. So once the creature had gotten out of frame and out of eyesight, Patterson and Gimlin, they rushed to collect their horses because they had run off during this encounter. And they attempted to track the creature for a little while after, um, but they were unable to have another encounter. The film has been incredibly controversial since that day, as it's never been officially proved proven to be real or to be a hoax, it's still considered to be unsolved footage. Patterson had this film, he developed it as quickly as he could, and he took it to a lot of researchers and scientists and asked them to look at it. A lot of these people um, that he approached pretty much like outright refused to look at the footage. The most debated point about the footage um, is the figure itself um, and how it could have been realistically created. Now, I've seen a lot of documentaries and artists who have tried to recreate the realism of the figure and the, like, the movement and the anatomy. Um, they've never been adequately recreated. Comparisons have been drawn from the footage to um, Planet of the Apes because the original movie had come out like around the same time and actually had won an Oscar um, for makeup work. So people were trying to draw conclusion, um, draw comparisons between the two because Planet of the Apes was kind of like the epitome of the equipment of the time. So it's like if they couldn't fully compare it to Planet of the Apes, then how could they have created a creature in the middle of the forest like this? that was then put on screen. So Jeffrey Meldrum, a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University, he can't really draw any comparisons between these two things, that being the Planet of the Ape movies and the Bigfoot footage. The anatomy of the original figure was just considered to be too pristine and realistic. A quote from Meldrum explains this point a little further, so I'm gonna read that. They start at the head and they can see the drip trapezius. They can see the deltoid, erector spine down the back, shoulder blades moving under the skin, the quads contract when they're supposed to contract. So in short, he believes that the original figure in the film, which is, um, it's actually called Patty, he believes that that figure um, was not a costume. In my unprofessional opinion, I've seen a lot of Bigfoot videos in my time, it's just one of those things I've always been interested in watching when they're recommended to me on YouTube. Um, there's actually a Sir Spooks video that had a compilation of like 13 of the best Sasquatch videos. It doesn't feature the Patterson Gimlin ones, they're more contemporary um, fo like footage. I will link that if anyone is as interested as I am and as ADHD obsessed with Sasquatch as I am. So I would say that I have seen a lot of good videos and bad videos in terms of Sasquatch. This Patterson Gimlin footage is incredibly believable to me in terms of like 
the actual footage. I can see why debate arose towards Patterson and Gimlin, particularly Patterson because he was already interested in Bigfoot prior to the experience, but with Gimlin being the skeptic, that makes the footage feel like a lot more real to me, especially because this experience, this encounter, actually changed Gimlin from a skeptic into a believer in the Bigfoot and Sasquatch creatures. It changed the mind of a man who was a, already a skeptic, which makes it, I don't know, it, it, it's slightly more believable to me. The way it moves and the way you can see it's like its muscles and the hair on it and its movement, it's so smooth and fluid. I'm leaning towards it not being a hoax. Like it looks like the real thing. When I imagine a Sasquatch in my head, that's what I see. I see this patty creature. Until someone conclusively finds that this figure and others are fake, I'm gonna think it's real. <laughs> I don't know. I've included all of my sources um, along with the original film in a stabilized version. Um, I'm gonna put them in the description. So if you're really interested in this, I would recommend going through those sources and just kind of seeing what you find through them. This little film is what initially got me into the paranormal and it still holds up like 50 years after it was filmed and it's still debated on. And Gimlin is often interviewed about the footage. Um, Unfortunately, Patterson passed away in 1972 due to cancer, so we can't talk to him anymore. After this experience, they never went back on their belief in the footage. They always said that they believed that the creature they saw that day was real and that it was not a hoax. So whether it's real or not, it's still something incredibly interesting. Like the actual footage has this eerie feeling to it. There's something very uncanny and bizarre about it, even without the figure of the creature walking across it. And even if it's fake, I guess it's just kind of fascinating to look at and analyze. I don't know, Bigfoot freaks me out and I know a lot about it and now you do too. So take this information with you out to the world and stop a stranger on the street wearing your fucking mask and talk about Bigfoot. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> if you could, um, I guess um, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe and maybe give me a comment if you have something you would like to see from me, like a video, a documentary, a topic. I'm always looking for new things to talk about and research and whatever. And I will try to make time and film a little bit more because I haven't done it in a very long time and I live a sad life and talking to my camera makes me feel a little bit better sometimes. So talk to me. <laughs> and I also have a Patreon. So I would like to say thank you to my patrons, um, specifically the people on the screen right now, because they're my only patrons, but I love them. They know who they are. I love them. On my Patreon, you can get early access to all of my projects, including videos, but also I have some Patreon exclusive sketches that I did over the summertime for a sketchbook project with the Brooklyn Art Library. I kept those uh, Patreon exclusive only. So if you're really interested in seeing me draw a lot of hands, <laughs> I would suggest you go and look at my Patreon and see if you are interested in supporting me because I could use all the support I can get. Yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks so much for watching me just talk about random shit <laughs> and happy Bigfoot. And <laughs> You fuckers. <laughs>